Hello, welcome to Crafting with Jane. Um, today we are going to be having some fun um, getting a bit messy. Now I did a, um, a simple napkin thing with you the other day and I thought that we would do something with tissue paper. So this is just ordinary tissue paper. In fact, I think this actually came into it in a shoe box or something. But any tissue paper you've got is absolutely fine. Um, I'm doing this six by six and you need a cheap glue stick. Um, I'm using this one because I was given them, but it is the easiest way to be able to stick um, the tissue paper down onto the um, card or onto the paper without it making a really nasty um, blobby bits because we're going to be using reinkers. So any reinkers that you might have, I've got some that are, oh, I don't know how old they are, but they're absolutely fine. I still use them for reinking my ink pads, but I don't think I'm ever going to use all of them. So you need to make, oh, oh, my washing pole has just gone to clunk. If you heard that noise, that's my washing pole that's just gone clunk because it's windy outside and I've got my washing out and the door open but don't worry okay so I glued this all the way across then I'm going to, we're going to do two then you just need to get your um, tissue paper and literally roll it up and screw it up because what you want to do is you want these lovely little wrinkly bits to be in there so the easiest way is to take it sort of from the center as we did with the napkins the other day. If you missed that one, then like, subscribe and look back and you will then see everything. Now, you can see I'm just going right the way around on here and smoothing it out, but you can see all these lovely wrinkles. So I'm just making sure that the glue is going right up in here where we want it. And then I'm just going to take some scissors and we're going to just trim this off because we don't want all of the pieces. We need to make sure that, as I say, these edge pieces are glued. I'm doing it six by six because it means that I can trim it down if I want to. Um, but I find it's quite nice to sort of do die cuts and things out of it and make some really pretty things so I shall show you some of those at the end but I'm cutting around this roughly I'm giving a little bit of leeway because we're going to be using quite a lot of water and um, reinkers so we need to have a little bit of space um, I use a tin tray I've had a tin tray which I think belonged to my late mother um, and I've had it for oh, I don't know how many years, but it's the sort of thing that I always bring out for something like that. It's not the sort of colour that I would use for anything else. It's very, very vintage retro. You probably saw it the other day. It's, um, it's in browns and um, sort of swirly patterns that, as I say, is very, very sort of 50s, 60s retro styling um, when all the pottery and stuff like that and teapots and things used to be that sort of colour so it's something that doesn't go with any of the things that I have but it's great for bringing out for doing crafts and things and it means that then all your work's not going to come everywhere now you can see I've got some little blobby bits on here I don't want that I want it to be smooth so I'm just making sure that I'm bringing it across nicely and I've got it right in those corners Okay, so I can bring that down now because I don't need any more of that for the time being. As I say, this one is a Scotch um, glue stick, but I think they make them in all different brands and I don't think it really matters which one. So again, just take your tissue paper, give it a good old scrunch up, fold it out and then take it from the centre down. Okay. and then just take it out and smooth it from the center doesn't matter if you've got sort of you know little lumpy pieces or fold over pieces like this it just adds to the look what you don't want is to have bubbles so you need to sort of make sure that you're 
rubbing the um, tissue paper right in nicely. And as I say, I'm taking it right round onto the corners like this, so that it's nicely glued. And where I've got little tiny pieces that are looking as if they're bubbling up, I'll take them down. And then again, I'm just going to take this like that. Now, colour-wise, you can choose whatever colour you want. Um, I have done greens, which I'm going to do again because I really love the greens. Um, I've done pinky oranges, which um, I did for um, a really nice leaves and sorry the pinky oranges I did for flowers because you can then die cut them out um, and you've got these really rather lovely looking shapes now at the moment it doesn't look anything at all but that's fine so and it will take a while to dry so the next part we need to do is I am going to bring in my trusty tray make sure you can see that in on there yes you can put this in the middle now I'm going to do the greens first and I have got various different colors of reinca so I've got this is a very old reinca which is called certain celery um, I've got granny apple green I've got daffodil delight I've got pear pizzazz I've got wild wasabi so doesn't really matter what as long as you've got different shades of green that will allow you to to do different colours and things on. And all you're going to do is, um, I'm actually going to get a little bit of tissue paper, um, sorry, kitchen roll to just go underneath this because I want some too. And because it's going to get a little bit messy, what I don't want to do is to be doing one and it fall all over the place. So I'm going to put this in on here so that'll give me a little bit of extra space in there. OK, so we're literally just going to take our re and you're just going to go blob, 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 blob. Do a little bit on there. And then let's take... Now, I don't know what um, this, I think, is going to be a little bit darker, which should be quite nice. Because you don't want them to be all the same sort of tone. You want them, some of them to be a little bit different. That's why I've chosen the yellow, because the yellow will just brighten it a little bit. So I'm just going to take a couple of blobs of yellow. Like that. Okay. And then I want to add some, to get some sparkle in there, I want to add something called mica powder. And I'm going to guess I've got a few little pots. Now, I never bought big pots. You can buy big pots of this, but I only ever bought little pots. So these little pots are by Cosmic Shimmer and they are iridescent mica powder but I think any sort of mica powder you can use now what I tend to do is I will just take the lid off they're very very fine so I will get a little I've got a little tiny brush which is a really soft brush and I will take a little bit I'll do it here so you can see it. I take a little tiny bit on the brush literally just that's all you need and put it down on here and then I can literally just tap it. So I can take it in on here and just tap it across and you can see it's just coming out in little tiny bits like that. And that's all we will need, I think. Um, I might use some of the yellow. I'm not sure yet. We'll see as we start using our water spray. Now this is a, um, just got water in it. But all we're going to do now is to just start taking all of this and getting it. Now you can see how this is coming with the dark. Now I'm going to just add a little bit more. That dark one was quite nice, wasn't it? I think that was Granny Apple. I think I might do a little bit more of the dark. Whoops. on 
there. You can see how it's sort of running through, which is quite nice. Love the way it comes through all veiny, like that. And then I'm going to just add a little bit more water. Okay, now it doesn't look a huge amount on there, but if I then take, I'm hoping this is, no, it's not quite big enough, is it? I need a piece of paper that I'm just going to use as um, the blot. And you can get another beautiful pattern with the blot as well. So I'm just going to cut this um, in half. Hold on, I've just screen. This is me throwing my trimmer on the floor. It's trying to do things off the cuff. And I'm just going to take this at, needs to be at least six inches. So I'm going to take it by just a bit over six. And then hopefully that will be, that should be enough to do both of them. So you can see it's not completely done on here, but if I take this and put it over on here, and then I'm going to rub. So what will happen is that it will take some of that. You do get a little bit messy because you can see it squeezing out and you can put as as good paper as you want but you then get two goes at it and the reason why I say you get two goes is because as you take this piece up you get another print in like this okay which is lovely so you've got this done on paper you've got that done on um, the really crinkly stuff so I need to go and put this to dry so I'm literally just going to put it out of the way so that I can put it down to dry. Because, as I say, it's one of the things that it's not going to, it's going to take a little while. Now, I said I was going to use a little bit more of the mica because that gives, when it dries, this really lovely, beautiful, sparkly sort of look to it. So I'm just going to take some of this and just sort of, sprinkle it in on top because as it dries it is going to just give a really beautiful look and what I might do is just take a little bit of paper on here just over where I've got the mica and give it another rub like this which will give me another bit of a print and all of these you can use as little backgrounds and things like that but you're making the most of just using a few drops of ink so if I take this off again lovely and I've got another one on here and when it dries you'll be able to see you've got loads of sparkle on it so I'm going to take this out of the way and just put it in because you need to let it dry and not fiddle with it so it's the sort of thing, let it dry for at least, let me bring it up and you can see all the lovely colours, at least, oh, I don't know, a couple of hours, something like that. So I'm going to put it down on here. I'll bring it back in at the end so you can just have a look. And then we're going to do the other one. And I thought I'd do the other one in blues and see what that's going to look like. I think that'll look quite nice as well. Now, um, so what have I got in blues? I've got pool party. So I'm just going to do a splosh. And as I say, all I'm doing is one drop each time. And then this is a sort of mid-tone blue. It's Marina Mist, an old one. But again, you know, use what you've got. You don't have to use any particular brand. Just use whatever reinkers you've got. Now, this is a dark one. So this is um, Dapper Denim, which is one that I've had for a long time. But that will give me a nice look. Like that. Okay. And then I'm going to add, I've got blue mica powder. So I'm going to add that straight away. 
just take a little bit of this up and we'll just you can see I'm just sort of dotting it about in on here and that's all you really need you don't need much more than that I might add a bit more at the end but we'll have to see and then all I'm going to do is exactly as I did before just get myself my little water spray I do love these colours. See how they start to bleed across. It's very exciting. Okay, I think that's probably about it. Now this time, I'm not going to fiddle too much. I'm literally just going to take a couple of sheets of this card because I know I can then use it again. Um, and it's not particularly um, precious card. So this is, I'm just going to cut this one at six inches again, which is the same size as this. But you can see how it's all sort of starting to bleed across, which is rather exciting. And then I'm just going to take two pieces like this that will go in on the top and we should get two prints. So again, you can see it doesn't look as if it's going anywhere. But if I put this across like this on here and give it a good old rub and what it'll do is it blends the colours through but obviously also gives us another couple of prints that we can use for different things you can see how it's it's coming through so let me have a look at this and see how this is coming out oh that's interesting isn't it really quite dark that's nice I like that print on there I think that'll look quite good um, so that's going to go down on there and then it's a bit dark isn't it I think I'm going to want to lighten it up a bit because that night of navy is really quite dark isn't it I like the pool party in on there so let's do a little little drop of pool party in the middle here I think I don't really want too much of it but that gives it that sort of bluey green, doesn't it? Um, and one little spray on there. Let's see how that'll do. Okay, then we'll take this one. Give it a rub. It's quite interesting how it comes through, depending how much water you've used. It soaks straight through the paper because this is just... Um, Oy, now some of this is coming slightly unstuck so I might have to do a bit of extra gluing in there afterwards there we go take that up like that that's why I always do it a bit bigger but again lovely print off of that one looks a bit be beautiful for clouds and and things like that as a background when it's dried and then we've got this one with all of the different veins and things as I say some of it will need to be just stuck down a little bit but that's fine and I might actually even just take one more off of this so it's not quite so bright I've got lots of sparkle in there which is nice and I'm going to take it over in on this side a bit I think give that a real good press and then take that off Ooh. That's better, take it from that side. Now this one isn't quite as good. It's peeling up a little bit, but as I say, it will, it will stick down. So I've got this one, which gives me another print, which is quite fun. That you can see has come up a bit, but um, a little way to rescue that is to literally just... Um, I've got a... That'll work actually. I've got a little paintbrush and I'm literally just going to dab it down. So you can see where, do you remember I said not to have too many bubbles coming up? And this is why it's always good that you can cut, cut it down a bit. So you can see where there were some bubbles because I didn't leave it long enough to dry and I probably oversaturated it. So just using a ordinary little paintbrush and just 
dabbing it down it means that I can make sure that you see where these bubbles are I can make sure that the bubbles are taken out so that we haven't got them coming in but you've still got this lovely micron stuff coming in so I'm going all the way around the edges making sure these bits here that look as if they're popping up aren't quite popping up and I can also take you can speed it up with a um, heat gun heat tool but it's better to leave it to dry because then it gives you that, that extra time. So that's the other one. And you can see, look at the lovely colours and the veins and things in that. Absolutely beautiful. Okay, so I'm just going to put that one down to dry as well. And then I will show you, put that on there. Um, I will show you, let's take this out of the way, what you can do with it afterwards. So I take this out of the way, take all of these reinkers and put them there as i say just use what you've got i've i've used lots of different re-inkers but use the colors that you've got um because that will work perfectly and um i'm going to show you some of the ideas that i've done with it so this one is a um from the green and i just cut out two leaves now i hope you can see if i bring it up enough you can see what i did was i used gorgeous grunge which is a lovely stamp set and literally just um, stamped over there in a green and then also stamped in gold so you can see the gold and then the leaf you can see how you've got all the veins and things coming on the leaf I hope you can see that if I bring it up you see all that lovely colour and stuff on there. It really looks beautiful. This is where I turned it into just a very simple card, but it's the actual veins. It's very difficult to see. You get a real shimmer on there from the um, mica powder. And then this is the one that I did with. So this is how it looks when it's completely dried. So this is the red one. So you can see on here, I hopefully you can see some of the mica powders and things shining through which makes it look really rather pretty. And it's really nice and, and almost like parchment-y type paper um, because it's fused together. And then all I did was I just used a punch to punch out a couple of these flowers. And this time I did it in silver. So I used the silver at the back and um, you can see the lovely colours in there. But you don't have to do anything. This is one that I'm just doing as a topper. But you can see all the veins and things in there. You don't have to do anything particularly fantastic with it because it just looks amazing. Very difficult to see on camera how amazing it looks. But um, trust me, when you when you come to do it, it is just um, one of those things that you you just have all of this lovely colour and things going in and it makes it just look beautiful so I hope you enjoyed that as always please stay safe and well please be kind and look forward to seeing you again soon bye bye